In this episode of the Retro Programmer, we're going to talk about doing some simple animation on the Texas Instruments TI-99-4A. This computer has the distinction of being the first 16-bit personal computer, and it is also the first computer that I remember programming on. It sets itself apart in several ways. Besides being a 16-bit home computer, it also has a 3 MHz processor, which at the time was considered actually quite fast. Compare this to the 3 GHz processors we have today, and it might seem quite slow, but the similarly um, marketed Commodore 64 had a processor at about 1 MHz. The TI-99-4A had so-called 256 bytes of scratchpad RAM and 16 kilobytes of graphics RAM, which makes it somewhat small compared to other computers, such as, again, the Commodore 64. The TI came with a built-in BASIC interpreter, like most computers of the day, and this BASIC interpreter was, in fact, developed by Microsoft. And this is actually uh, quite normal. Uh, Microsoft developed many of the early versions of BASIC that were available on these computers. The BASIC that was available came both in stock and as an extended BASIC that I believe was available as an add-on cartridge. And one of the things that this stock BASIC gave you was the ability to define your own character set, creating simple graphics. With the CAR subprogram, we are able to define a character and display it anywhere we would like to on the screen. And we are given a range of characters that we can define ourselves, which is 96 through 143, and it seems that we can also even overwrite our standard ASCII character codes. So you can create your own character, and this gives you all of the different bit patterns that are available and displayed on the screen. And the basic documentation, of course, comes with an example program. So we're going to type in this program and then execute it. For our demonstration, we are using the V9T9 TI-99-4A emulator. If you go to use this emulator, you'll have to download your own ROM files as they do not come with the emulator itself and you'll have to find them. So when you boot your TI, you see that it actually has a boot menu, and this is interesting. That seems another thing that kind of puts it ahead of its time. Now, we only have the standard TI BASIC available, so we will go ahead and launch it. And now we are faced with the task of typing in our BASIC program. Now, we are going to run our emulator at three times normal speed to make these things go just a little bit faster for the sake of demonstration. And we can take a little bit of a shortcut here that certainly wouldn't have been available to us back in the day, but we can use a paste routine built into the emulator to automatically paste in the computer code that we've typed in. So now if you're not familiar with BASIC, these, all these early versions of BASIC required you to have a line number before each line. And I really have to say, I just love this example program because it's so deceptively simple, but exposes the programmer to so many different techniques. So we have the program typed in, and we're going to type run, and we have a little animated character who's waving his arms and legs back and forth. If we break out of the program, enlist it, so going line by line, on line 100, we clear the screen. Line 110 and line 120, we are defining the bit codes of the characters that we want to display. Then on line 130, we are setting the colors that we want to display. Line 140, we are displaying the character 96 at the location 1216. So that's the, sixth, the 12th column, 16th row, and character 96. And then line 50, 
we are, excuse me, line 150, we are updating the character 96 to be the bits that are defined in the string A. And then we are doing go sub 200, which gives us a delay. And then we are calling back, um, which returns us to line 170. And we are then updating the character to now be the bits that are in the string B. And back to go sub 200, which gives us another delay again. And then go to 150, we start the thing over again. So it just keeps switching back and forth which character is being displayed there. So to understand how this program works, we need to have some understanding of binary, of hexadecimal, of bit mapping, of x and y coordinates on the screen, and how to use string variables, and what the ASCII character set is, and what character codes are in general. And then we also require some looping constructs of being able to handle our for next loop on lines 200 and 210. So we ran this program and it works, but now let's define our own characters and see where we get. So now I'm going to demonstrate making our own animation with this uh, character modification glyphs that we can do in the T99 basic. And I'm going to make an animation of a little man doing jumping jacks. And I'm going old school. There are probably tools that would let us do this today with our modern computers. But this is how you would have done it back in the 80s with some graphing paper. So let's give this a shot. I have pre-created here six grids for the frames of my animation. And we are going to start coloring things in old school. Now what we have is a uh, animation of a man doing jumping jacks and I did pre-design these. I'm not just doing this off the top of my head. Just to make sure it was an animation that would work. So we're starting with the top of the jumping jack with the arms overhead and the legs spread. Alright, that's frame one. Okay, now we have frames 1, 2, and 3 done, and hopefully it's starting to look like it's actually doing something. Okay, all six frames are done. So you may have noticed already that I have divided these, it's, we have an eight by eight grid, eight this way and eight this way, and I have divided them into one by four chunks here. And that is because we have uh, a binary glyph map that is divided like this with hexadecimal digits. So Let's just write this out. So we've got this value, this is worth 1, 2, 4, and 8. And over here we have 1, 2, 4, and 8. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 rows. So what this means 
when we look at this first piece is that we've got the value 1 that is filled in. So the first half, the first digit, if you will, of our first glyph is 1, and then our second is 0. And then here we have 1 and 2, so this is the value 3, and we have 8 here, so this is the value 8. And then on the next line, we have 1, 2, and 4. So we have 7. And here we have 8 and 4, which is 12. So we are doing this in hexadecimal. And hex goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, because hexadecimal can represent the values 0 through 15. So if we have all of these lit up, then it's 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 4 is 7, plus 8 is 15, and 15 is F. So I said this value is A plus 4 is 12, so that's A, B, C is 12. So then here we've got 4 plus 1 is 5, and then here the value 4, and then 1 plus 2 is 3, and here the value 8, and then 1 and 0, and 2 and 8, and 4, and 4. So we just keep going like this for every single one of our possible frames and I just realized this was not fitting into the video so this is my little count out of all of the different possible hex values and we will try to keep everything in frame for the rest of this here okay so now I'm just going to go through and keep doing everything that needs to get done so one All right, that wraps things up, and now we'll just need to transcribe all of these numbers into our source code so that we can have each frame of the animation that we want to implement. Okay, now that we've defined our own characters, we need to type them in. And this, we will have to do by hand, based off of the bitmaps that we created a moment ago. So we're just going to overwrite the variables that are here by creating new versions of each line. Okay, we've put in all of our strings that should represent the graphics that we want to display, and we had a minor mistake when we were redefining B string, and so we went ahead and duplicated that with the correct answer. And then we've got, um, we've just numbered our lines, 121, 122, 123, 124, so they fit in between 120 and 130. And, well, let's see where things go from here. So on line 150 through 180, we are displaying A and B. 
So let's now fit in our own versions in lines in between lines 180 and 190, which I think we have exactly enough open line numbers to do that. So let's give that a go. All right, that should work. We should now have it going through A through F of the characters that we've created. Let's see what happens. There we go. We have our little guy doing jumping jacks of some sort, although it would be better if this were pinging and ponging back and forth. But I think that's pretty cool, and this was the first kind of programming that I ever did. And like I said, I really appreciate just how many different concepts you have to understand to really get a grasp on what this is doing. And thanks for joining me. This was TI-99-4A Basic with some simple animation using the updating of character codes.